My name is Jeff Bezos, and I am the founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Amazon.com. I was born on January 12, 1964, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, to a 17-year-old mother who was only 17 at the time and still in high school. My mother and father married, but their marriage did not last, and at the age of four, I moved to Houston, Texas, where my mother remarried and I was given my stepfather's surname. In just a short period of time, my life and identity had taken a whole new direction, and we moved again to Miami, Florida, hoping for better opportunities and an easier life. I wasn't always the richest person in modern history. I gave up parts of my youth in high school working at McDonald's as a line cook in order to make extra money. I never let it get the better of me because I always knew I wanted to do more with my life. I tried hard in school, even enrolling into extra courses in the student science training program at the University of Florida. Working part-time and using what little time available to study, I graduated valedictorian of my high school. In my speech, I stated my vision in wanting to preserve Earth from overuse through resource depletion. At 18 years old, when the internet wasn't even released yet, people thought it was nothing more than just a young teen's dream. At first, I didn't know what major to choose in college, but then I remembered building an alarm system when I was younger to catch my siblings when they tried to sneak into my room. So, I attended and graduated from Princeton University with degrees in electrical engineering and computer science and began working for a number of companies, from a financial telecommunications startup to banking, where I gained valuable knowledge about the inner workings of Wall Street. I was making more money than I ever had in my entire life. Growing up poor, I've always had very little, but money to me was only a tool and never the end goal. I wanted to create something that had never been done before, something that was mine. By 1994, at the age of 30, I was the senior vice president for one of the world's largest investment management firms, but I still wasn't happy. This was the fork in the road for me, and I knew I had to decide if I wanted to continue this path or take a huge risk and follow my dreams of creating something more. After writing a business plan, I quit my job and began searching for investors for my company. I warned them that there was a 70% chance that my new business could fail because the idea of blending the internet and commerce had never been done before. They were just as ambitious as I was, and on July 5th, 1994, I launched my business from my garage. At first, we only sold books, but I knew from the very beginning we wanted to sell everything people wanted. It was always clear to me that the internet was going to revolutionize the way people lived, and physical bookstores seemed like one of the more obvious things that would change. It didn't take long until people began ordering all types of books from our website, and we eventually began selling music and videos. To bring back a little nostalgia from my childhood, I installed a bell to notify anyone when we got an order. But after a few weeks, we had to turn it off because we received too many, and the bell became annoying. Just as we began selling things beyond books, in 2000, the company hit rock bottom. A combination of fierce competition and the dot-com bubble burst led us to near bankruptcy. Online startups and companies were disappearing and closing all around us, with many, including myself, unsure if we would make it. Through luck, we had borrowed and raised nearly $2 billion from a number of banks and investors weeks before the burst, and we were able to ride out the turmoil. During this time, we followed our main three principles. One, the customer is first. Two, stay innovative and remain inventive. And three, be patient. To us, inventive meant more than just e-commerce. It meant admitting that we weren't perfect and that we would solve our mistakes. We began as a humble online bookstore turned into an online e-commerce store where anyone can find anything from A to Z as the logo shows. It wasn't always called Amazon though. At first I wanted to name it Kadabra or Relentless, but was talked out of both. I finally chose Amazon after the largest river in the world by volume, but I wanted to do more than e-commerce so I quietly founded Blue Origin, a human spaceflight startup company in 2000. By 2015, we had our first test flight into outer space and plan on having our first commercial flights into space by 2019. 
I want to live in a world where everyone can travel throughout the universe, just as they can now travel by airplane around the globe. They may seem out of reach, but not so long ago, your only option to purchase a book was to walk into a store. Of all the goals I had in mind, becoming the first centibillionaire on the Forbes Wealth Index was never one of them. The aim was always to produce services that can make life easier and better for others, a task that was not always easy for me. We revolutionized the way people purchased their goods and services, making it so that they don't even have to step out their front door to get the things they want. My success was to work diligently towards my own personal goals. The thing with ambition is that it can never be fully quenched, and once one goal is reached, others have to follow. I like to believe that pride and joy can be taken from your accomplishments, but you can't rest on your laurels for too long afterward, or life will become stagnant. You have to strive for more goals and more achievements. This might seem tiring, but when you have a passion for life and a desire to create things that are beneficial for the world, the passion will give you the energy you need. The hard work will become enjoyable, and it will also give you a sense of purpose. It won't always be a smooth road, and sometimes people won't always agree with the approaches that you take or the things that you do, but I've always believed that in order to do new and interesting things, you have to have thick skin and an ability to tolerate critics. You should always take on board what others have to say, but if you can't see their logic, you need to have the resolve to stick to your guns.